So who all are working, they might have worked with Slack, Microsoft Teams. I hope you all must be aware of that. Our next speakers, they have created the same an alternative basically for Slack and Microsoft Teams, which is an open source but a no compromise alternative to tools like Slack and Microsoft. They have built Raven, which is a free open source, free and open source messaging tool designed for communication within an organization. So yeah, uh, I'm Nikhil Kothari. Hi, I'm Janvi Patil. Uh, we are uh, from the Commit company. Uh, we basically build uh, open source developer tooling in and around the Frappeverse. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many of you have you know, used Frappe, uh, but we maintain these libraries uh, you know, that interface with Frappe or provide developer tooling to it. Uh, so yeah, we want to talk about Raven today. Uh, and uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so let's start with uh, the messaging landscape of today, right? So these are the few apps that one might use for work messaging. So there are structured tools like Slack and Teams, but there are also unstructured tools like WhatsApp and Telegram. And all of these tools come with certain limitations, right? So with Slack and Teams, they are paid, and the uh, pricing model of these tools is inherently broken in a way that they charge on a per user per month basis. And let's say you have a user that sends like a thousand messages a day. And then you have another user that uses it for a month and you sends like two messages in a month. It's not fair to pay um, the same amount for these two users, right? So uh, that's their pricing model. Then uh, let's talk about integrations. So Slack and Teams do have integrations uh, with other applications, but if you wanted to build an, uh, an integration with a third party application that does not have an integration available. So you'd need a developer to build it out for you, right? You cannot build that yourself if you're not a developer. Um, yeah, and now there's um, WhatsApp and Telegram, right? These are free to use. Uh, but uh, these have both personal and professional communications in one. So it's very difficult to organize all your work communications in one place over there. Yeah, and so we built Raven. So uh, we started uh, building Raven around FOSSHACK, right? So a majority of the initial application was built at uh, FOSSHACK 3.0 this March. Uh, and uh, yeah, one of the uh, questions that we get asked is, you know, why not Mattermost or Rocket Chat, right? So we were using Frappe and ERP Next, uh, like a lot of businesses do, right? We already were paying for a server. It just makes sense for a company who already has users on ERP Next to just have a chat tool integrated with ERP Next, right? Now, having said that, this is also, you know, one of the one of the reasons why we did not want to go for rocket chat was um, integrations is something that you again have to have a developer build it, right? Our goal is how can we make it no code? The same way that Frappe framework is sort of no code, right? So how can we make, you know, in building integrations for a chat application no code as well? Yeah, Raven is simple yet powerful. So what we have is a web application. We have a mobile app, which is a PWS, so it works both on, IO, works both on iOS and Android. And then we have this uh, integration builder that we're still working on that lets the users build integrations right from the GUI. So these are a few examples um, of our app. This is how you can organize conversations into channel. You can have public channels, private channels, and open channels. Open channels are basically broadcast channels where all members are uh, uh, users by default. Great, so we have a few bugs to log now. <laughs> Yeah, you can drag and drop your files, so you, you can just uh, get your files uh, from wherever they are and drop them, and that's it. So uh, we are currently reworking the UI as well, right? Uh, you will find that it's eerily similar to Slack, <laughs> uh, and that's because we were, you know, when we were building it, that's what our inspiration was, uh, right? So yeah. Yeah, you can preview messages, uh, like PDFs and images, uh, then you can react to messages, and you can also reply messages. So basically, all the features that you would expect in a basic chat application, we have built those, and now we're building on top of those. So 
So you can save important messages, and then you can find those messages in your saved messages folder. And so, yeah, search is something that we have built, but it sort of works, right? Um, it works because it's, I mean, it's, why, why do I say sort of? Because it's currently just doing raw SQL queries, which is not really efficient, right? We are now migrating it to Redis search. We've seen a few other Frappe apps like Gameplan do that. So, yeah, if, if you guys have any suggestions, you know, on how we can improve our search, because search is sort of an important thing for a messaging tool. Um, yeah, and then we have a mobile app. Uh, so, yeah, you want to take up? Okay, no, it's a it's a it's a progressive web app, right? So we built this using Ionic, uh, and the reason is because uh, that allowed us to share code from our web app as well as our mobile app because the logical pieces are the same, the UI is different, and uh, if you install this PWA on your phone. Right, it actually behaves like a mobile app. Even the animations, transitions, you know, because they are controlled by Ionic, uh, you know, it behaves like a mobile app. And you can, yeah, you can install in just one click. Uh, I mean, on iOS, it's like more like three clicks, to be honest. So. I think same for Android. You have to bookmark it. <laughs> no, Android at least allows you to show a banner to install it. Yeah, PWA. If if anyone's considering using PWAs, you know, for your projects. Just beware that you know the companies that are in charge of both browser standards as well as the operating system standards are one, right? So it's either Apple or Google, and you know they they are very slow in adding features to PWAs in our opinion, to be honest. Like haptics work on Android, haptics don't work on iOS. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a video of the mobile app. We've pushed a lot of updates since then, like you know since this video was taken. Uh, yeah, I think we can go. Yeah. So Raven is built completely on open source, and these are the um, applications that we are using. We are, are for our backend, we are using Frappe. For our front end, we are using React, and uh, for the uh, mobile app, we are using Ionic and Capacitor. Uh, we recently migrated our editor from Quill to TipTap, and yeah, that's been awesome. So, yeah. Uh, what's next? So. Yeah, performance and polish, right? Uh, so performance, what we did earlier was we thought that we'll virtualize the list, right? So if, you ha if you're opening a chat interface, right, all of those messages, we'll virtualize it. Uh, and we tried doing that. Now, um, the problem was that, you know, on our web app, at least, the chat interface is about 80%, 90% of the width, right? And your messages could be of any height, right? Because someone can write a paragraph, someone can just write one message, someone can send an image. So it's very difficult to actually you know, virtualize that list, so we are actually getting rid of virtualization altogether. And we are now paginating messages. It's not as easy as it sounds, because uh, simple pagination, simple infinite pagination is usually just one way. Whereas on chat apps, you, know, you, you must be able to click on a message, and it should scroll to that message, even though you might not have fetched that message, right? So yeah, we're doing that. Second, you know, this is, the second point is more about polish, right? So if you look at any chat app, and you type in a message and you hit enter, right, it, you, you, it just feels instant. Even though the API call might not be complete, right, but it feels instant that the message just went through. In our case, it doesn't feel instant because we actually wait for the API call to finish. So what we are going to do is something called as optimistic updates. You know, you, you basically assume that the API call is going to be successful, and so that actually gives, you know, an, you know, an illusion of speed, so to speak, right? The third one is something that we fixed yesterday, was showing compressed images instead of high res. Uh, that was something that was taking a load. You know, there are small improvements, like adding a skeleton loader to avoid layout shifts. And we are redesigning the UI on the web app, at least. Uh, so yeah. And then improve search, as I mentioned, we are switching to Redis search now. And instead of you know, just uh, adding everything in the text content, you know, we are sort of going towards keyword searches. Right, because you wouldn't search for, let's say, the, right, T-H-E. You wouldn't search for that. You would probably search for something very specific in a message. So yeah, we're working on that. Next, we're working on an integration with Frappe and ERP Next. So any Frappe app, I mean, this is one of the features that is you know, most requested you know, from the community, that uh, they should be able to link a document to a message. They should be able to share documents from ERP Next to Raven. Uh, so this is one you know, proof of concept that I was working on. 
you know, on ERP Next or Frappe, if you have a document, let's say, uh, you know, a purchase order or something, you can, instead of send email, you would also now get a message, or a button called send a Raven, right? You click on that and then you can just share the document to Raven. Um, and then we are also working on integration builder. Now this is the, you know, the interesting part, right? So this is something that we want to do. Um, we're using Go rules. Go rules is a business rules engine. It's open source as well, right? And Frappe already has done a lot of heavy lifting for us because it's got server scripts. It's also got doc events and all that. So technically you could build a workflow like this, right? Your, let's say if on Frappe HR, your payroll gets executed the payslip is generated for employees. All employees can get a message on, you know, from the Frappe HR bot, right? And this is, this is something that we won't build. The workflow itself we won't build, right? The workflow will be built by the people who are using, and they will not be programmers. That's our goal, right? If you, if you just limit integrations to programmers, then, you know, you're, you're sort of just dependent on them. Uh, similarly, you know, adding complexity, you know, purchase order created if, is the total greater than 50,000. And you can basically extend this to, you know, have multiple layers and have an entire decision table or a decision tree um, uh, using that rules engine that we spoke about. And another very requested feature is an embeddable chat component. So let's say if you are on, um, let's say, Frappe Desk, right, and there's a support ticket that comes in and you want to chat, to chat with your team, instead of going to a separate interface, you know, Raven, right, we want to be able to build a common React or Vue.js component that you can just embed in your application and it will just, you know, stick to the uh, bottom right corner or actually you can actually customize, you know, wherever you want to show that chart component. Um, and yeah, so if you want to try out Raven, you can deploy it on Frappe Cloud. It's not available on the public benches, it is available on the private benches though. So yeah, uh, you can deploy on Frappe Cloud. Or you can self-host it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, it's supported by, you know, the FOSS community, right? We, as I said, we took part at FOSS hack. That's where, you know, we started. And uh, we were also, you know, lucky enough to get into the Frappe incubator program. Uh, so yeah, uh, sure. Uh, that's our website and that's our GitHub, please star. We have just reached 100 stars, I think, two days ago. So yeah, thanks. And you can contribute to this, I mean, uh, yeah, we're yeah. looking for contributors. Yeah, we have a lot of issues that are marked as easy. Like, we've added the label easy, so, you know, start with those maybe. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If yeah. no, then we're good. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>